One of the big disruptors for love is uh, miscommunication. Yep. And in your scuba diving story, I thought it was most interesting because a thumb up does not mean I'm okay. It means I'm going upward. Uh, say, say it one more time. A thumb upwards does not mean I'm okay. It means I'm swimming upward. Right. And a thumb downward <laughs> means I'm swimming downward. Exactly. Uh, I'm okay yeah. is that. Right, right. Um, and I guess some people believe all wars and all arguments are due to miscommunication. Um, in your small, uh, small, smaller community, do you have any conscious effort to how people communicate coming from such different backgrounds to avoid confrontation? That's such a great question. Yeah, the, the project of a multiracial, multi-everything community is um, conflict. Because wherever two or more gathered, there is, God might be there, but conflict is too. Um, yeah, because we write, we have, we have so many different things happening in our brains when we're talking to each other. I'm a psychologist uh, and a theologian, and the, the, way, the way I think about the way we're built is like a narrative, like the stories shape us. So think about all those different stories at work in that room, and, and then they're encountering each other and they're bumping into each other. Uh, the, biggest, the biggest misunderstanding we've had on my watch in 14 years is frankly around Black Lives Matter. I just, multi-everything, multi-racial, justice forward, we, we got this. But I said Black Lives Matter one time too many in a month, and it was on. Um, one of my Chinese members were like, <laughs> why are you saying that? And, and what I realized, sir, is that I hadn't done my work. I thought I had, but I hadn't broken that down. I hadn't done the paragraphs that lead to the phrase, you know? like. When, when black incarceration rates are low, and when the wealth gap is small, and when drive-by shooting stuff, you know, all of that stuff I hadn't done. So I ended up doing a bunch of one-on-ones with people, which is communication, and really listening deeply for what they didn't understand about it, and what was troubling for them, and it changed the way I preached about it, and it changed the way I taught about it. But yeah, communication and misunderstanding is often at the root of of, of the trauma between us. Was that, was that a good answer? Thank you for asking, that's a great question. <laughs> Wrong side. So, if, so if I had done something different, maybe he would have stayed with me, right? Oh, <laughs> that's my takeaway. <laughs> What's your hope for 2018? Your personal big wish. Yeah. That we rise up. I think it's pretty clear I'm a progressive person. Um, I don't understand. I kind of understand what led to the election of Mr. Trump, but not enough. Um, and understanding it isn't enough. I think what's happened is we've been, we've been being ushered over the last decade to, or two into this time. It didn't just happen. But we've been ushered into a time of such hatred and such unbelievably uncivil behavior and such rancor and bullying. And so I hope we rise up. I hope we rise up together as a human family and insist on an ethic of love, create a beloved community, teach our children how to love each other, and uh, turn the tide. That's my, that's my hope. Hi. Hi. Thank you so much for your talk. It's very um, inspiring. And Thank I've you. never seen a church like yours. So Thank you. I am excited to visit one day. Very much like what you said, I also have um, been kind of not shocked, but uh, upset about our political, political situation. And unfortunately, um, I have members in my family who, well, my in-laws family, but I still consider them my family. Yeah. Um, <laughs> who are very much Trump supporters, um, and still are, which yeah. is uh, pretty hard. Right. So every time I mention, you know, Black Lives Matter, or, you know, immigration reform, or um, pretty much just anything, because um, he's just attacking us all, uh, it's really hard for them to hear me, and um, I've noticed that me and my husband have just pulled away, yeah. um, because our values just don't align. So I guess my question to you is, 
how do you bridge that gap with revolutionary love? Yeah. Um, like in actual everyday practice, because yeah. I want to be able to have them understand my experience um, and what their, how their um, actions, I guess, are and beliefs are affecting me and my husband. Yeah. But at the same time, I don't think I'm ever going to change their mind. So right. I don't actually know what to do or if it's even worth my energy. Yeah. But at the same time, like I can't just sit down and just listen to them say their nonsense. So. Yeah. So that is just yeah. So I want to answer that two ways quickly. One is just, I'm writing this book about getting naked, going deep, and coming clean. So the get naked part, I think, in that would be the vulnerable place of, you know, all of us grew up learning how to make I statements, but the vulnerable place of, you know, when we get to this place, I feel speechless because I don't know how to tell you how disappointed I am. You know what I mean? Like that kind of thing. That's a, that's a naked thing which might just make a little bridge toward the other. Um, the, the, the go deep is actually, I think, then a way of listening. So we might follow something like that with, so could you, like, I'd like us to talk about the dreams that are folded up in this moment for us both. You know, what, why, why is that so important to you? And I want to be able to tell you why it's so important to me, you know, so that deep is the conversation. Because we actually... I said, I, I confess, I don't really understand, but I've been really trying to listen to understand because if I don't listen to understand, I definitely cannot do anything about it. We just are gonna keep crashing. And then I think come clean is, like, it's okay to just really, like, can't stand them. You know, I mean, to be honest, right? There's, there's like, really the path of trying to understand, and then there's the, the, the reality that we might disagree. And I think, I think on the other side of trying to understand and coming to, to a place of, of, um, of, of divergent view is a real place. And the real place is then a better place. It's the, it's the I'm at Fox and you're at MSN and BC and nobody's talking, that's not a real place. But a real place that comes because we've communicated and again, just to get back to our art, I think art drops us right into reality. So to, to really, you know, we might let our puppets argue with each other at church to, to, to mimic a real conversation. I'm just calling us too authentic. Yeah. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, shout out to my resistance sister, Sally Rumble. Where you at? Uh, we both are part of uh, a resistance revival chorus. Oh, and, yes. Um, I'm barely on Facebook, but... I don't believe in uh, coincidences. And so I was on Monday and it was an invitation to come here uh, for a creative morning, which I have never heard of before. Um, and then today I almost didn't come. Where you at? Oh. And then today I almost was like, I, I don't feel like coming because of everything I, I woke up to. Yeah. Again, no coincidence that I started going the wrong way and had to turn back around to come this way, right? So. I don't believe in coincidences, and I have been uh, had the honor to be in your presence before. So um, that was another draw to this oh. to to be here. It's so um, good to see. You. So question is one in this frame and this invitation of revolutionary love. What are some concrete things folks can do yeah. around this? And then two yeah. for Black, Brown, immigrant communities specifically. Yeah. What? Um, what sense of self-care can we bring? Because it is a very trying time, um, to say the least. And so I'm just wondering what kind of, in that vein of revolutionary love, what kind of self-care do you suggest for us as well? Oh, those are just, thank you so much. Excellent questions. Um, to the first thing about concrete, and maybe that connects to the sister's uh, question too. We put up on our website at middlechurch.org, and I'm not in charge of the website, so I'll make sure it's back up today. But we just put some kind of prompting questions for conversations. So I think one, some concrete things about revolutionary love is to really approach the other. My friend Valerie Kaur um, talks about revolutionary love as love of opponents, love of neighbor, love of, uh, love of uh, self, because she doesn't do deity. Um, but I think um, this kind of uh, unconditional regard, sister, the unconditional regard for the unique particularity of the other is, is what this guy named Diogenes Allen says 
love is. I just love that idea. The unconditional regard of, of, of the unique particularity of the other, which is to say, I can appreciate you even if I don't like what you're saying. Because you, me, as a person who does do a deity, are also a child of God. So whatever gets us there to like look at the human, the other one, and this then spills out to everything, right? Like we're like Alice Walker, you know, I knew if I cut a tree, I would bleed. That sense of really looking at each other and seeing there something beautiful and lovely and because it just because. That is a real practice, a spiritual practice. And I think that if we had that kind of spiritual practice, that would get us about gender and get us about sexuality and get us working on race differently. It would get us working on things differently if just the regarding, just the regarding of the other. And whatever theology gets us there or philosophy gets us there, I think that's really practical. And then in terms of self-care, you know, you see I'm a black, overworking woman, okay? Um, and that back into that, my frame of unmasking, like who the hell do I think I am that I have to be everywhere? Why am I going to Mississippi Friday to, to the Merle Evers Museum? I don't know. Like, there, why am I not just staying home and having sex with John? I don't know. <laughs> but, but I do think we've, we've internalized as black and brown people, we've internalized something about how to get to worth, right? When I say, you know, the guy in the kitchen makes me think I'm supposed to please people, it's also everything said, you gotta work twice as hard because you're black and the white people, blah, blah. You know what I mean? So this worth thing, this esteem thing. And I think another spiritual practice is to literally decide just by our own dammies. You know that old expression? Just all by my damn self, I'm okay. I'm okay way before somebody approves of me. I'm okay way before I earn blah, blah, or get the job, or get the gig. And that, I think, is at the root of so much of what's wrong with us. All these people not feeling good about ourselves. Does that make sense, love? So that's, to me, self-care. Get a massage, have a glass of red wine and some chocolate, pray, meditate, do yoga, whatever it is that gets you in touch with your absolute gorgeousness that is not dependent on anything except you just are. You just are. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks for asking that. <laughs>